Bearcat fans. This is Michael Bennett coming to you campus of Kentucky Country Day, home of the Bearcats. It's senior night. Alongside me tonight is my good friend Bob Holtgrave. Good to have you here, Bob. How you doing, Michael? Good to see you. <laughs> Bearcats have been on a winning streak lately. They're uh, of the last seven games, they've won five of them. Excellent. Done a great job, but this is going to be a battle tonight. Last time these two teams met was in the uh, uh, tournament here. In the uh, All-A, yes. The, the All-A's of the 7th District. And a really hard-fought battle in that championship game. Unfortunately, the Bearcats went down by three. And uh, so this is going to be a real matchup tonight of, of the Bearcats showing hopefully their will and their guts to get out here and, and put a win on the scoreboard for the, for the team. Absolutely. You know, that game, Michael, could have really gone either way. And I think one of the things that uh, this team desperately needs is they need to break this curse. They've lost uh, several very, very close games to Collegiate. They need to get over the hump here. And uh, in talking to some of the assistant coaches before the game, they feel real good about our chances. Well, it is senior night as they, you're going to see a few of the players come out here. So uh, we'll take some time to enjoy that as well. But, uh, yeah, you're right. This is going to be a big rivalry game. I, it's going to be a hard-fought game. And I tell you, tensions are high, not only on the <laughs> basketball court, but out here on the, uh, in, the, in the gym. It's blackout night. And uh, we're expecting to uh, obviously see a big crowd here so far. And uh, good to see the student body over there on the other side. All Rowlett. the blacks supporting their Bearcat team. Absolutely. You know, they had, uh, they had an incredible crowd here when they played the finals of the All-A 7th Regional game that unfortunately Collegiate won by three. So, so it, it really, uh, you know, it was a raucous environment. And... Uh, and I think we'll have exactly the same tonight. Well, I, I, as it comes straight from Coach Booker, that last ball game left a bad taste in their mouth. So there is a, a, a bit of a tension here by the Bearcat team to get out here, perform, and put a win in the record column for them. Because they, right now their record's 12-11. and 11. They've got three more games after this. And they, they want to end the season and have these four seniors uh, enjoy a winning record on Absolutely. the basketball side. Absolutely. So. You know, in that All-A, Michael, we went the whole tournament without making a three-point goal. And we also were very, very poor from the foul line. So if we can reverse those two trends, get a couple three-pointers to fall for us, and protect the ball, I think we stand an excellent, well, excellent chance to win this game. Exactly. I, I don't mean to interrupt you there, but one of the things that stuck out from that ball game as well are the turnovers. Oh, a lot of uh, turnovers. Way too many turnovers that they saw on the Bearcat side that, uh, you know, that's not the typical Bearcat team. And, right. Uh, they've had great games. They've had ups and downs, though, but they've had games where they've had a lot of turnovers. That's Absolutely. really upset the coaching staff trying to figure out what the heck's going on here. But uh, hopefully we do see a, a – excuse me, a lot less turnovers on this side so these four seniors can go out with a big win, have a winning record to end this 2011-2012 season. Right. Well, our next game uh, on IHA is going to be February 14th, Valentine's Night. Oh. Uh, as we host the Anderson County, 7.30. I hope everybody out there is able to join us. So, But, again, that's going to be February 14th, Tuesday night at 7.30. Yeah, they're introducing Shelby Hendricks, uh, Michael, and you know Shelby is probably she could arguably be the best female player Absolutely. to play at uh, at KCD. She's a 2,000 plus point scorer. She's got over a thousand rebounds, and uh, you know one of the IHA games that you missed, I think, when you were at that Rick Pitino basketball camp. <laughs> Uh, she must have lit them up for 25 or 26 <laughs> points. It was quite a show that she put on. She's a heck of a player. Well, I was asked a, a question this week by a friend of mine. Uh, after we uh, saw the North Carolina <laughs> blow a 10-point deficit to Duke, and I was asked the question, how do you do that? And, of course, my response very quickly was, ask Rick Pitino. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I tell you what, the other thing you could say is, is uh, if you wanted to find out how to lose a national championship and be up seven, you would want to ask John Calipari that because – well, he blew that in grand fashion. Uh, you are correct, but so. that's different team, different time. So we don't have isn't to worry it, isn't about it that. funny, too, great coaches like that? Oh, we, yeah. we can find individual circumstances <laughs> where they blew it, where yeah. they were normal like us. Well, they just introduced oh, Mac Ferguson yeah. coming out there with his parents. Yeah, Mike is out there with, uh, with Scott and Janie Ferguson. Great family. You know, Scott's a member of the board here at KCD, has been for a year, and cre been incredibly involved with the program. Oh, second player coming out there. 
Yeah, that's Zach, Zach Zimlick. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, Zach, Zach Zimlick is. Uh, Boy, he's a he's a he's a hard nosed kid. He's uh, he's played a ton of AAU basketball. Uh, you know, his dad is just the, the most wonderful of guys, and uh, and you know, Zach is uh, Zach is our blue collar guy down there on the low block. Probably could score a whole lot more points than he does. He just gives what the team needs. Absolutely. Well, here comes Ricky Brown. Yep. Third senior of the night. Yep. Ricky well, has a, he, he loves that number three on his oh, jersey because yeah, and he, that's likes he likes shooting to shoot it, yeah. Exactly. That's he, one thing uh, his mother yeah. was telling me first game of this year. That's the reason he picked the number three. Yeah, but Tom and Marla are really special people, and uh, and you know Ricky's uh, Ricky's played uh, basketball here at KCD. Gosh, I remember going back to fifth grade. He's played. Oh so, my gosh! So yeah, he and Blake and Mac all played together, and uh, that's great. And you know Ricky actually missed an extended period of time. I want to say in his freshman year he had. Uh, Surgery, uh, some type of chest-related surgery where he had a plate put in his chest. Well, here Great comes news Bla for him is uh, he's healthy. So well, Here comes good. Blake Senta. Yep. Might go down as one of the best players here to play on this uh, basketball court at yep. Kentucky Country Day. He's just had a whale of a career here. Yep. He's there with his parents, uh, David and Beth. Uh, again, wonderful people, just like all the parents here at KCD seem to be. And, uh well, there are you're, a few, especially the one sitting next to me. Now, your wife's a great lady, but, Bob, I don't think much of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I appreciate that. <laughs> that's right. I just like to be honest. Like, Absolutely. Coach Booker mentioned yeah. that uh, this, this, senior I, I, group, I, this senior class here that's going out tonight, this is a special group to him because when he came on board as the head basketball coach for the varsity team, this was his freshman class. So they've right. been here since the start for Coach Booker. So. They do mean a lot to him. Absolutely. So I'm sure this is a happy night plus a tough night. Take a look at the IU uh, faces <laughs> of uh, of the seniors up there. That's great. Yeah, I so. mentioned that the girls game uh, earlier tonight. That uh, you, My wife says I don't need a big head because I've already got one attached to me. <laughs> I got one of those too. <laughs> <laughs> Not a big head that I'm conceited. I just got a big head. <laughs> That's right. What can you do? So. <laughs> but this is a great evening here. Start of a big night. Hopefully the Bearcat team comes out here, puts a big win on well, the Well, you know, uh, I tell you what, the other thing that's really nice about tonight, Mike, is is uh, one of the other parents is getting honored tonight. John Crockett is uh, getting honored. I think he's oh. going into the KCD uh, Hall of Fame for, uh, you know, John Crockett. Henry's dad was a, a exceptional basketball player here. He's probably recognized as a better basketball player well, he's being recognized as a basketball player. He's probably a better baseball player. Absolutely. Well, you know, he was a walk-on at the University of North Carolina, which obviously they take anybody on that team. I don't think much in North Carolina as well. <laughs> I think he was a scholarship player, wasn't he? Yeah, absolutely. But we're going to take a quick break right now. Come back. We've got 10 minutes before the tip-off. This is Kentucky Country Day Basketball Network. Hello, Bearcat fans. I'd like to welcome you to tonight's ball game of the 2011-2012 edition of the Kentucky Country Day boys basketball team. Collegiate comes out here, donned in camouflage. It's blackout night for the Bearcats, but it's obviously camouflage night for Collegiate. This is a big rivalry between these two schools. Has been for years. Two very good teams. Bearcats hope to bring a win home for the uh, home crowd tonight as well. well Michael, Big looks game like, uh, also for uh, Ballard and Eastern tonight. The reason I mention that, the winner of that game, uh, February 21st, the Bearcats will be playing either Ballard or Eastern. So that's a, that's a big question for them tonight because uh, that's a big game here locally as absolutely. well. Michael, what do you think of this camouflage the Titans <laughs> came out in? I, I, Truthfully, I think it's a bunch of rednecks, but 
Uh, I hear it's a pretty good school. It's not the uh, caliber of Kentucky Country Day, but hey, it's a good school. Yeah. <laughs> I like to give one of my closest friends a, a hard time. Of course, he's a retired colonel from the Special Forces, and he still dons his camouflage every right. now and then. But uh, I, I love it. I think it brings a lot of – Adds uh, a little flavor to the game. Absolutely. You got – Again, blackout night on the uh, Bearcat side, and you got camouflage night for the collegiate Titans. But uh, we got eight gonna, minutes left gonna, until the, the beginning of the game. And it's going to be off. a fun game here. You know, yeah, Michael, it is. I think I think the keys here as you look at this game, you know, uh, you know, I think for the Bearcats, you know, the keys for them are going to be, you know, they got to protect the ball as you mentioned. You know, we're going to have to uh, beat the press. Uh, we're going to have to make good decisions passing the basketball. We're going to have to get Blake involved big time. And if we can knock down some shots from the outside and shoot a good free throw percentage, I think uh, I think we got a great chance. Well, the standouts for Collegian are uh, uh, number 21, Andrew Stegman, who's a guard. Number 41, David Keir, yep. who's a forward, who's a good, comes He's from a, a very player. good family. Miss yep. Keir, uh, who I know personally and I Mr. Know her too. Yeah. They're great people. Big tutor for uh, my son, Max, and so they do a great job there and have a great young man out of their son, I tell you David what, David Keir is one of the nicest young men I've met. I really like him, and, and I tell you what, what you're going to find here is uh, he's an athletic kid. He's probably 6'2", 6'3", 6'4". He's a quick jumper, and his basketball IQ is off the chart. So he does a really, really good job of putting himself in positions to – you know, to be successful. Well, number five is the last player that we need to watch out for, Bryce Overstreet, forward for them. But but really the standout on the collegiate side Stegerman. is Andrew Stegerman. Absolutely. Yeah. Good player, all-around player, so uh, handles the ball well, shoots well. So they'll be the three players we're going to watch here. Spotlight, if, if Coach Berker said, if we could hold them, then we have a strong chance and should be able to win this ball game. Well, with that – with just a little over six minutes left before the tip of this ball game, we're going to take a quick break. This is the Kentucky Country Day Basketball Network on iHi.com and 852FX. Well, with just a little over five minutes left, still tipped off. Bearcats are warming up as well as Collegiate, getting ready for this hard-fought ball game between not just the uh, players but also the students out there. This is bragging rights here for what's to be known as the best two private schools here, not only in Louisville but the state of Kentucky as well. And I think they pride themselves in how much they charge for tuition as well, Bob. Oh, but what, boat schools? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. They certainly do lead on what they charge. But, Absolutely. But, but you pay for what you get. These it's, are, yeah, uh, it's money well spent in both places. Absolutely. So. Great academic schools. Uh, uh, very well thought of schools. They've been here for years. And uh, But it'll be a lot of fun. I'm glad you're here alongside me tonight. It's going to be fun. Tell me, you mentioned a few keys to the ball game. Uh, what really – on the Bearcat side are we going to have to do? Well, I think I think it's a couple things, Michael. I think the first thing is is we got to protect the ball and limit turnovers. So Collegiate will press us all over the court, and they're going to rotate a lot of people in and out. they got a lot of really quick, athletic, smallish size guys, and they put a lot of pressure on you. So, you know, Henry Crockett's ability to create separation from uh, some of the Collegiate defenders is a key. I think, you know, so once we get it over into half court, we've got to get the ball into Blake. We should run everything through Blake's center, and if Blake has the shot, he should take it. If not, he should dish it out to the perimeter to guys like Ricky Brown and Mac Ferguson. Yeah, uh, you, you, you get those two guys shooting the threes well, that's really going to open up for Blake center. Then I, you really got your free choice of rain, whatever you want to do, and that really should put a, a, a win right there on the uh, record of the uh, Bearcat side. Absolutely. So, it, it, it will be a tough game. It'll be interesting to see if the refs try to control this ball game. 
because I'm not sure which way that'll be the advantage. It might be more so on the advantage of Collegian if the refs take over calling this ball game. Yeah, it could be. You know, they Collegian um, in the last game, you know, they got into a little bit of foul trouble. David Keir got into some foul trouble. And Stegeman was coming back from an ankle injury. So uh, Stegeman didn't start. He played most of the game. So, so you know, you got to consider those two guys are going to play more than they did in the previous game. So it makes the task a little bit bigger for KCD, but I think they're up to it. Well, did we get any kind of foul trouble that last ball game? You know, I, I, don't, I think we had several guys with three or four fouls. Really the way I judge if we're in foul trouble or not is really if uh, – if Blake Sinton and Henry Crockett get into foul trouble. Because really, in this game, those are the two guys that uh, you're carrying the most burden of responsibility. And uh, so if Henry can have a good uh, ball control decision game and Blake can stay out of foul trouble and control the paint and get his typical 20, 22, 25 points, I think we stand a great chance to win. Well, between Robert Schultz and Blake Sinton, we do definitely, looking at the players on the collegiate side, the Titans don't definitely uh, definitely don't have the size that we do. So you think on the uh, rebounding side, defensively and offensively, we could control the boards there. Right. And uh, well, we, you know, this David Kier, you'll see real quickly that he's uh, he's an exceptional rebounder for a kid that's six three, six four. He can he can flat get after it. So. Well, we've got just a little over two minutes left to the tip off. We're going to take a quick break. Come back for the tip-off. Two minutes. This is the Kentucky Country Day Basketball Network on iHi.com and 852FX. This is also the game of the week. Start slipping away And if you ain't gonna fight Get out of the way Cause freedom makes so free When you breathe red and white and blue I'm giving on myself How about you? And they call me warrior This is the National Guard Game of the Week, brought to you by iHi.com and 852FX. Kentucky Country Day battling against Collegiate Titans. Tip off just seconds away. Michael Bennett here coming to you from the campus of Kentucky Country Day in Louisville, Kentucky, on a frigid, snowy night with a winter advisory going out here in horse. We're hoping to see a winter advisory here on the defense <laughs> so uh, and make those Titans not shoot well. But, Bob Holtgrave, this is going to be a great ball game. I'm hoping, uh, as excited as this crowd is, the, the momentum and the, the potential that we have out here to get a win will be on our side. Absolutely. I hope so, too. So, you know, I tell you what, though, there's a, there's a pretty good contention here from Collegiate as well. So, so it should be a spirited atmosphere, and uh, it'll be interesting to see how we do. Well, as we await the starters for tonight's ball game, again, this is being brought to you by 852 and iHi.com. Coach Booker, a little bit on the nervous side, as you can tell, pacing around <laughs> here right in front of the bench, and I don't blame him. This is a big game between these two schools. We've mentioned it several times tonight, but uh, it'll be fun as the atmosphere is fun. It creates a lot of fun for these players. Yep. Looks like the Zebras are checking in here. <laughs> Uh, we're awaiting the introductions of both teams. Yeah, so Michael, here's who I think is going to start for Collegiate. They'll start Kennedy Comer at guard. They'll probably start uh, Ryan Perry at one of the forwards. They'll start the Overstreet kid, Bryce Overstreet, 
at forward, Kier at center, and then the, 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 the guy we got to stop is Andrew Stegman, number 21. So Kennedy actually used to – Kenny's a real good friend of my son's, David. And Kennedy was on a team that I coached for several years. He's just quick as a cat. Is uh, he really? Yeah, he's a great defender. Uh, he handles the ball pretty well, good passer. You know, I would say that he's a marginal shooter, but, uh, boy, in their press he wreaks havoc. Well, as you can see now, as the players go out there on the court, size is our advantage. But we've got to hit the shots on the outside. Yeah, absolutely. Blake Sitha comes out there. Yes. Big senior night for him. Ricky Brown's in Bruce. Comes out there, what the heck does Robert have in his hands? He looks like a princess <laughs> with his wand out there, but uh, I don't know. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Mac Ferguson comes out there. <laughs> but the princess looks good. Yeah. <laughs> Number five, Zach Zemlick. So it'd be nice if we could get uh, some scoring out of Zach down low. We just need Zach to be active, rebounding, and defending. And Henry Crockett comes out there as well. So there's your starting five for the Bearcats. As we get ready for the tip off of this ball game between Collegiate Titans and the Bearcats of Kentucky Country Day. All right, so it looks like we're going straight into action. Uh, I guess they took care of the national anthem during yes. the, the girls game, I guess, yes, right? Yes, All right. Coach Booker out there giving the players the last few words of advice, get their team ready. It'll be interesting to see how this tip-off goes. I don't know if Blake has to jump at all. <laughs> well, I tell you what, I think he's going to have to jump because Kier can flat-out jump. Can so. he really? Oh, my gosh, yeah. little delay here. The crowd is uh, student section really close over there. Referee's trying to make sure his court's clear. I don't blame him. That's a nice, safe thing to do. Before yes. we start this tip off of the ball game. Michael, I see that collegiate fan base over there in a the camouflage, and I'm thinking of uh, the old University of Miami days when they were playing uh, Notre right. Dame and <laughs> when they played the Catholics versus the convicts. You're so. showing your age there, Bob Holtgrave. I know it. Bearcats control the tip off. Mack gets it out to Henry Crockett. Collegiate opens up in a man-to-man. -man. Yeah, I tell you what, Michael, first pass from Henry. He's a little bit lazy on it, and Kennedy got a hand on it. We're fortunate to retain possession there. So uh, Henry little... desperately needs to create space between he and Comer. If he can do that, he can totally neutralize Comer's defensive abilities. But he didn't do a great job of that in the last game. So They got Blake. Overstreet trying to call guard Blake Senta. There's that inside-out pass to Mack. Can't convert it. No, and it uh, looks like the ball should stay with the Bearcats here. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I'm a little surprised because, quite yeah. honestly, the, the correct call was collegiate ball. Well, no, I, actually, Michael, I thought that went off over Street's legs. So, I, I, you know, I think that was the right call. Yeah. Kevin Stammerman, our cameraman, agrees with me. I'm, gonna, that, I'm sticking agreed. with my original assumption there. <laughs> As a father of a player on the team, you should. <laughs> but uh, so the Bearcats just really extending right the right pressure, there. and they forced the first turnover of the game. So, so again – you know, KCD's got to create space. You know, when when a team like that overplays on defense, you know, it's the it's the receiver of the pass that has the responsibility to get open. So, so you know, we, we need to our, we need to get our guys to do some V cuts and get open and make those passing lanes a little bit bigger. So well, we run a minute off the clock this first quarter. No score in the ball game so far. Nice reverse right yeah. there by number 21, Andrew Stegman. Their star guard. Yep. He's a junior, so we'll have to deal with him one more year after this ball game. Bearcats bring oh, it down. I wish Ricky would have taken that one. He did have a good wide open shot and just didn't do it. Uh, I don't know, a little nervousness right there, not ready to shoot the ball. Oh, but Blake beautiful gets it up. play in there good by Blake. For two points right there. Tying the score with 6.25 left in the first quarter. Ball game's tied 2 2 as Collegiate Titans bring the ball down to the other end. I tell you, Michael, on the defensive end, we really need Henry Crockett to keep nice staying. Nice block right there by Henry Crockett. Unfortunately, the Titans get the rebound. Nice rebound there by Zach, Zach Zimlick. Zimlick. 
Gets that rebound. Henry I tell you what, we need to keep, Henry needs to keep Stegeman in front of him. Good. Oh, that's huge. Three pointer for Ricky huge. Brown, bringing the score five to two. That's a big shot right there, Bob. Oh, it's huge. You know, when Ricky can stroke it, it makes us a whole lot better team. Oh, good, good, good rebound there by Zach Zimlick, and he gets it off to Henry Crockett. And he tried to do a little razzle-dazzle there, but thank goodness there wasn't a uh, Titan at that end to grab that ball, but uh, Henry's able to control it, bring it back to the other end. Oh, nice, nice move right there. there. Two points by Henry Crockett with 528 left in the first quarter. Puts the score 7-2 to two in favor of the Bearcats. It's nice to see Henry do that. If Comer's going to put that much pressure on him, he can take him to the hole. He's bigger and stronger. Oh, a beautiful. Block right there by Blake Senta. That's the second of the night for him. Henry Croxon brings it back to the other end on the Bearcats side. Quickly drops oh, up there. Beautiful move. Beautiful two shots Beautiful right there. move. Taking the score down to two. Great start. A great by start the there. Absolutely. Bringing that momentum here that they're feeling from the fans. With five minutes left in the first quarter. Titans take their first timeout. It's going to be a 30-second timeout, so we're going to stay right here. I tell you what, Coach Booker's doing a nice job. If these guys are going to extend pressure, you got to attack it, and that's what Henry Crockett did on the last two plays. So uh, that's that's great. Uh, you know, that it looks like our team's prepared and ready to play. Absolutely, he's done a nice job of controlling that ball and bringing the confidence up in himself to drive that ball up into for an easy two-point shot. Absolutely. Twice. I tell you what, if your dad's going in the Hall of Fame, you better show up. What do you think? <laughs> I agree with you wholeheartedly. I think he should show him up is what he well, should do. Well, I, I don't know if we, I would say that. It's kind of John's night. We don't want that to happen. But, but we want him to play well, that's for sure. Absolutely. Well, Bearcats show up in the man-to-man -man again on the defensive side. Five minutes left. Bearcats are up seven points. It's nine to two as the Bearcat fan section goes crazy over there on that side. Mike, it looks like uh, Colin Shuddy just checked in for collegiate. Good defense right and there. And he's replacing Kennedy Comer. Oh, That's bad a pass. right there by Henry Crockett. Henry he's needs to take that all the way in. Gets in oh. Ball, just misses a two-point shot. Number Shuddy 22. with a nice rebound for collegiate. Number 22, Colin shoot with that rebound. Brings My, it to the other end, misses it. That was Will Michael Nolte with the first shot, and I think Stegeman followed it. All right, so the, the challenge is, is when they score, Michael, they're going to press us. So, so we need to handle the press. Oh, good pass there by Mike Ferguson up to Ricky Brown. Laid up nicely there by Blake Sinton right. in. Gets That's the way you points. attack it right Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Makes the score 11 to 4 with four minutes left in this first half. Or I should say first quarter. Zach Lyle's getting ready to check in as, re as well as Robert Schultz when we get the next timeout. But this Bearcat team has come out here ready. They're leading 11 to 4 with 340 left in the first quarter. Really a big show in here. They're so still KCD's standing out still a man to man. Man to man defense. As the Bearcat student body starts yelling defense, defense, doing a great job getting their. Bearcat basketball team ready for this ball game. Nice shot there by David Keir. You know, David Keir has the ability to step out to about 18 feet and make that shot. Yeah, David so, you know, you, so if uh, Blake comes out and guards him, you got to watch him going around you, but you got to honor that shot. Nice right, move there by Zach Zimlick. It's good, making it 13 to 6. Beautiful what? move there. Aggressive to the hole. You love to see it. Three minutes left. Bearcats are leading 13 to 6. Number three, Ryan Perry with a Ryan nice Perry. shot there. He's their senior forward on that Titan team. Ricky Brown does a nice job to oh, back. Oh, here's a dunk. The flank. There oh, goes the yeah. Bring it they're, home. they're attacking the press beautifully. What a nice job. Great press killer right there, Bob. Doing a great job with 2.30 left in this first quarter, making the score 15 to 8. Really exciting that Bearcat student body over there on the opposite side. Good defense right there. They stay in that man-to-man. -man. Good help there by Zach Zimlick on Stegeman. Bearcat so, Michael, I think what we got to do is, is we just concentrate on Kieran Stegeman. I don't, if we could take those two guys away, I don't think they can beat us. Well, that shot was missed by number 23. That's Mac Mac Nolte. Nolte. 
Will's a great young Good man. Ball I know him well. I've known him for well, a Mac long time. Mac Ferguson for three. Uh, just, just off. Just in and out. Rebound right there. Going it's like a foul on Zach Cats. Zimmick. I like that foul, though. He's going aggressive to the boards. Yeah, it's going to be uh, the first team foul going against the Bearcats. The first on Ricky Brown. As we see uh, Zach Lowes and Robert Schultz checking in for Mac Ferguson and uh, mm -hmm. Zach Zimlick. And coming in for collegiate, it looks like Kennedy Comer's back in. And it looks like Overstreet's back in. And out is David Keir and Ryan Perry. Minute 50 left in this first quarter. Titans bring the ball down as they're down by uh, seven points. Bearcats leading 15-8. Oh, nice where's right that foul? I don't, that's going to be on Schultz, I think. But I didn't see much of a foul there. I think he got him a little bit with the body, but I thought that also was a kind of tic-tac foul right there. That's actually on uh, Zach Lyles, I think. Yeah. That's the second team foul against the Bearcats. Zach Lyles' first foul. Collegiate goes up for two free throws. Misses the first one. Number 21, Andrew Zegman. Well, I'll tell you what, this Andrew Stegeman's got uh, quite a nice build on him for a high school player. He's strong looking. Looks like he ought to play football as well. Yep. But, you know, Collegiate doesn't have a football team. Not quite the athletic department that we have here at Country Day. i tell you, the sports they play, though, they're awfully good. Nice press break there. And Robert Schultz, oh, tries a dunk and doesn't convert. Nice job. Nice buddy. recovery by Zach Lyles. Exactly. Zach Lyles for three. No God, oh, no I thought good. He had in and it. out, unfortunately. Minute 26 left in the first quarter. Bearcats still controlling that lead 15 to 9 as the Titans bring it down to their end of the court. Walk it's right walk there going against Street. the Titans. On Overstreet. Number five, Bryce Overstreet, their sophomore forward. Looks like Ethan Perellis is coming in for Andrew Stegeman for the Titans. Be interesting to see what. Uh, what the Titans can do with Stegman out of the lineup. This is an opportunity, I hope, for us to open up the lead a little bit. That ball's thrown in by Ricky Brown into Henry Crockett. Henry brings it up to the Yeah, Henry's the doing court. a much better job in this game, keeping some distance between him and Comer. Down to Robert Schultz. Oh, Schultz he got away with a walk there, I think. A little bit out of control, but Ricky Brown brings it back out. He's driving inside. It's going to be oh, nice just move outside there. the basket. But there's going to be a foul against the Titans. It's going to be on Colin Shuddy, isn't it? Yeah, Colin yes, Shuddy got is. that foul. He's their uh, senior forward. Ricky Brown's going to go to the line for two shots. Minute two left in this first quarter. Bearcats are still re leading 15 to nine. First shot's nice. good. Nice to see us step up to the line to make our first free throw. Really, I think more than anything else, the difference in the first game was is Collegiate made their free throws and we didn't. Number 41, David Keir checks in for number 21, or 22, Colin Shoot. Ricky's got one more, and misses the second one. Comer retrieves the rebound for the Titans. Less than a minute left in this first quarter. Bearcats are leading 16 to nine. Titans have the ball. Bearcats still on that man-to-man -man defense, doing a nice job with it. Oh, Ball's they would buy a pass bounds. there. That's gonna be a turnover. Bad pass by Overstreet to Comer. Ball's going to go over to the Bearcats. Will Madsen's checking in for the Titans. 46 seconds left in this first quarter. They come no, you're that fine. Press again. Throw it into Blake Senta. He turns around, takes it up the court like he's a guard. He's only a 6'9 oh, guard. Oh, nice play. And Robert Schultz. Great job by Robert. Beautiful pass by Blake Senta. Right, 40 let's seconds see, left. Let's see, if we can, uh, let's see if we can convert these two free throws here. So we're well, one one for two from the line right now, Michael. So let's see uh, if we can, if we can shoot seventy percent from the line. I think the odds are good that we can win this game. Robert's Robert first free throw's good. That's the first team uh, first foul on number twenty, Will Mason, on the Titans side. Second team foul on the Titans. Robert has one more. Misses the second one. Yeah, we need to make those. David Keir comes down with the rebound. 17-9, Bearcats in the lead. 30 seconds left in this first quarter. Bearcats have come oh, out Oh, good defense there by right Zach Clouds. Another great turnover going the Bearcats' way. 
I tell you what, out on the perimeter there for Collegiate, they had Ethan Prellis with the ball, and I think Ethan plays guard, but I wouldn't consider him to be one of their stronger ball handlers. Zach put a little pressure on him and forced the turnover. Henry Cocker controls the ball with 20 seconds left in the first quarter. Titans show their man-to-man -man defense. Mike, I think we're going to try to hold for one here, I hope. Hopefully we can protect the ball. They're doing a nice job of it right now, getting into their office with seven seconds left. Oh, beautiful. Got open three. Ah, just misses Boy, it. we got the shot we wanted, too. And that's the end of the first quarter. Bearcats are leading 17-9. to nine. What a way to come out to start this ball game, Bob. Yeah, it's a great start for them. Let's see if we can keep it going. We're going to take a quick break. This is the Kentucky Country Day Basketball Network on iHeart.com at 852 FX. Come back for the start of the second quarter. Welcome back, Bearcat fans. Michael Bennett alongside me, Bob Holtgrave, coming to you from the Kentucky Country Day campus, home of the Bearcats in Louisville, Kentucky. Hope you're enjoying this first quarter. The Bearcats came out, whale of an offense out here, putting up 17 points against Collegiate Titans, nine points. Bob, it's, it's really been a real spark of life, especially not only coming from the student body, but also from this ball team. Absolutely, absolutely. So, Great start for the Bearcats. We're doing a pretty good job of protecting the ball. I'd like to see us do a little bit better than two for four from the foul line, but other than that, there's not really many complaints you can have about that first quarter for the Bearcats. Well, Collegiate's going to have the ball started this second quarter. Yeah. Having a little problem with crowd control on the opposite <laughs> side, but uh, you can't blame it. This student body's really into this ball game. We definitely got a capacity crowd tonight. Uh, Bearcats have come out, start this second quarter with a zone as Zach Lau steals the ball and uh, ball goes out of bounds. Last touch by Collegiate, so Bearcats retain the ball. 7.36 left in this uh, second quarter. We're right here at the beginning of it. Bearcats are leading 17-9 if you're just joining us. Nice Bearcats press have break done a there. nice job of controlling that. Uh, they have. I tell you what, press. with the press that they're running, just flashing Blake right there at the foul line makes it pretty easy to break it. Nice oh, job nice right move there. there by Zach Lowe. Zach Lowe is able to get those two points, making it 21 to 9. 7 28 left in the second quarter. Oh, nice bit of passing right there by the Titans. Shot's going to be no good. Bearcats are up there fighting for the rebound. Blake Sitz is not able to get it, but a nice wow, shot Wow, Will Mason right with the bucket there. By number 20, Will Mason. Number three, Ryan Perry. And number 21, Andrew Stegeman check in for Collegiate. That makes the score set 19 to 11. 7.05 left in the second quarter. Titans still show that full court press, but the Bearcats Able to control that. Oh. Reverse not good by Schultz. Collegiate takes the ball to the other end. Somebody a little bit. Oh, what a block. What a block by Blake Senta. Bearcats take over the ball. Bring it down to the opposite. And Blake Senta's going in. Oh, there's got to be something there. Nice Get play by Zach Klaus. Zach Klaus, two shots. Making the score 23 to 11. I'm sorry, 21 to 11, six and a half left. Foul's gonna go against Zach Lowes. That's his second foul, team third. Yeah, Shot's that, good. And that play was all set up by Andrew Stegeman getting into the lane and, and it forced, uh, forced some people to come off and help and, and it left, uh, left Will Madsen wide open. Zach Zimlick checks back in for uh, Zach Lowes. Free throw's good. Making it 21-14 with 6.30 left in the second quarter. And 
Hubbard does a nice job going after that ball. He's showing a lot of confidence tonight. Yeah, that's a foul on Crockett. Good pressure there by Ethan Perellis. And uh, Ethan got his hand on the ball. Henry tried to keep him from getting a breakaway layup called for the foul. That's the right call, unfortunately. Fourth team foul against the Bearcats. First for uh, Henry Crockett. 6.20 left in the second quarter. Bearcats are leading by 7, 21 to 14. Wide open three right there. No e good. Ethan. Rebound by Blake Sinta. Bearcats yeah, a good look ball. there for Ethan Perales. Can't convert it. Ill-advised pass there by Crockett. Unfortunately, just knocked out of bounds. Possession stays with the Bearcats. Ricky Bound checks in for uh, Robert Schultz. 6.05 left in the second quarter. Bearcats are leading 21 to 14. Uh, Coach Booker's done a great job getting his team prepared for this ball game because they're really into this game, Bob. Yeah, I tell you what, though, you, there's some concern. We're only we've played pretty well and we're only up seven, so it'd be nice if we get a four or five point run before the end of the half and get a ten or eleven point lead. Double team right there by the Titans against Blake Sinta. Ricky Brown's got the ball, trying to drive in, throws it out to Mac Ferguson, Mac out to Henry. Looks like Collegiate's dropped back into a two-three, Michael. No, I think they're man-to-man. Man. Man. Yeah, they're man-to-man. Man. Throws it back out to Henry Crockett. Trying to set up a play here. Throws it into Blake oh, Sinta. total mismatch. Sinta's got to take that. Max wide open for a three right there. Just missed it. Rebound by number 21, Andrew Segeman. Junior forward. He oh, carried the ball right there. Double dribble. Turnover for the Titans. Ball's going to be uh, taken over by the Bearcats. You know, Mike, it would be nice when Blake gets that ball down low, especially when there's a size mismatch. Boy, I'd like for him to be a little bit more selfish and just take that shot. Well, number 23, Will McEnulty checks in for the Titans. Ricky's having a tough time getting that ball in real quick. It's going to be timeout. Called by the Bearcats with 526 left. You know, Michael, it's interesting. You watch this game, and collegiate hand checks a lot. So... So one of two things has to happen. If, if they're not going to call it, you know, our guys need to do a good job of arm sweeping those hand checks and creating some space. Uh, if you let them get away, if the refs aren't going to call it, you've got to counteract it by, you know, somehow separating yourself from those guys. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, 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 they were able to handle the press for the first quarter of this half. Uh, half, but it uh, seems like he's getting a little stuck right now because you're right. They are hand-checking. They weren't hand-checking that first quarter. Now they are, and it's uh, really stubbed the Bearcats getting that ball in bounds. Well, Bear you know, when Collegian's not scoring, they can't press, so that was helping us there early, too. So. Yes. So. Ball thrown into Zach Zimlick. Zach gets it off to Mac Ferguson. 5.23 left in the second quarter. Bearcats still have that seven-point lead, 21-14. Collegiate stays in that man-to-man -man defense, doing a nice job there, denying the ball absolutely to Blake Sinta. They double-team him every time he gets that ball. Ricky Brown's got a nice oh, drive nice right there. Nice move there by good Ricky for Brown. Two points with 4.55 left in the second quarter. Bearcats take a 23-14 lead. Puts it back up by nine. Bearcats change over that man-to-man. -man. Wide open shot right there. It's a miss. Over the back. Good hustle there, there by Zach right Zimlick. There. Zach Zimlick did a nice he job of blocking it ripped it away out. from Ryan Perry. Good hustle there by Andrew Stegeman, but he knocks it out. Possession's going to stay with the Bearcats. 4.36 left in the second quarter. Bearcats are leading 23-14. As Ricky Brown gets ready to throw the ball inside to Blake Senta. Oh, get in there. Wide Beautiful open right move there. by Ricky Brown. 25 14, 11 point lead for the Bearcats with 420 left in this second quarter. Oh, what a oh, move there. That was 21 Andrew, Andrew Stegman. Stegman. I tell you, though, going back to that previous play, Michael, I, I love Ricky Brown taking the ball down on the baseline and converting there from about eight feet. Nice soft shot there. He's able to show how he can stand up, get away from that defender as they're showing a tight, tight man-to-man -man defense and get that nice wide open shot. Ricky throws it back into Henry Crockett. Four minutes left in the second quarter. Bearcats are leading 25-16.
Oh, a lot of contact there. Blocking call. Call's going to be against Overstreet. That's his first foul. Collegiate's third team foul. David Keir checks in for Collegiate. As the Bearcats get ready to throw the ball inbounds. Max having a little bit of a tough time. Gets it out to Blake. Again, Collegiate shows that man-to-man -man defense. Boy, they're really uh, starting to call it tight now, Bob. Well, you know, you know, Michael, this is a whole lot like, you know, some of the Patino coach teams at Louisville and at Kentucky. You know, they fouled you. They bumped you so much that you can't call everything, but you got to call something. So, you know, there's a balance there. So, yeah, turnover is going to go against the Bearcats as uh, Zach Zimmer couldn't control that inbounds pass. So, with 346 left in the second quarter, Bearcats still controlling that nine point lead, 25 to 16. Bearcats showing nice defense right there, keeping the Titans way out there on the outside. Open shot right there, though. It's missed. Rebounded by Collegiate, number 10. Kennedy Comer. Kennedy Comer. They do a nice job of setting up the offense again. Oh, Blake almost had that pass right there. Wasn't able to get it just outside of those long arms. Michael air ball right with an there. air ball from 12 feet. Controlled by Blake Senta. Of course, the student body is letting him know he shot that air ball. Jump ball right there. Nice job by the Titans. But the uh, arrow is pointing towards the Bearcats. Robert Schultz checks in for Zach Zemlick with 2.52 left. Bearcats still have the... Nine point lead, 25 16. Each team has four fouls against them. That's got to be something. Boy, there's a lot of contact <laughs> there, and they're just not calling it. I, I'm shaking my head. I'm, I'm a little surprised. They've calling it close on some things, other things they're not. Oh, involved. nice move by Henry Crockett. Can't convert, though. Rebounded by Overstreet, now to Stegeman. Well, Nice, nice defense job right there. there. Mac Ferguson did a great job. Of, he couldn't control the rebound, so he slaps it out to Blake Sinta. 2.23 left in the second quarter. Oh, my. 25 16. Got to nice get that play in by there. Blake. When you got that height advantage, you got to get yeah, that ball in there. Yeah, just give it to him. And, he and he's up. really, he shoots such a high percentage from exactly. in close. Well, he goes up there with confidence right there. He knew he should be able to make a two-foot shot like that, making the score 27-16, bringing that 11-point lead back out again for the Bearcats. Nice, nice job Steve. of rebounding right there for the Titans, and they're able to convert two points. Oh, bad Ryan pass. Makes that shot. Oh, turnover by the Bearcats right there. Wide open three, but he misses it. Good Ricky rebound Brown's there by Ricky. The rebound right there. Timeout's going to be called by the Bearcats. I'll tell you what, if – if uh, if Stegman hits that shot, boy, that would have been uh, that would have could have been a big momentum swing. Absolutely. Fortunately, missed. We secured the rebound. Well, it's a full timeout with one minute and 39 seconds left in the half. Bearcats are leading 27-18. We're going to take a quick break. This is the Kentucky Country Day Basketball Network on iHi.com and 852FX. Welcome back, Bearcat fans, with one minute, 39 seconds left in the first half. Bearcats are leading 27-18 as they're about ready to throw that ball in bounds. Ricky Brown taking it from the uh, zebra at that end. Titans open up in their full court press. They've done a reasonably good job right there. Almost a turnover. Blake 
somehow able to control it. I don't know how. You know, Blake usually handles the ball really well. Yes. and uh, Yes, he does. Tight call right there going yeah. against the Titans. Well, I tell you what, it's another one of those things, Michael, when you're slapping all the time, you, you know, there's a light. They could be called almost on uh, any pass or any situation for a hand check or a slap. So that one goes on Kennedy Comer. That's his first. That's his first foul. Team fifth foul. Not really any kind of foul trouble other than uh, Zach Lyles, who has two fouls against him. Nice shot right, right there. Doesn't fall for Blake. Number 21, Andrew Segerman controls the rebound for the Titans as they bring it to the other end. Bearcats stay in their man-to-man defense. One minute left in the second quarter. Nice. Oh, nice move by there, David Keir. That was. David Keir does a nice job right there. Turnover by the Bearcats. Two points is good. Number 11, Ethan Perellis. Makes the score 27-22 with 40 seconds left in the first half. <laughs> Henrik Rocket beats it back up very quickly, but they're all over them. Thank goodness they're going to call a holding call. Getting a little anxious here on both sides, Henry Crockett as well as a little bit of a little bit of an altercation there. Looks like uh, Kennedy and uh, Kennedy and uh, Henry Crockett are friends, but uh, Henry slapping a little aggressively and then tries to draw a technical on Henry for uh, retaliation. But I don't think Henry retaliated. So good no call. It was. It was good no call. And Henry did a nice job of checking in his uh, temperature. I tell you what, Michael, our uh, you know our ball handling has really gotten suspect here in the last uh, five minutes of the game. Yeah, you know we had that 11-point lead, and of course now we're down to a six-point lead as Mac Ferguson misses that shot right there. That's good. Right, number three, Ryan Perry, making the score 27-24 with five seconds left. Foul's going to go against the Titans. That should be the seventh team foul. Put That's going to put them in the bonus. Up. Yeah, put Blake Sinnott up to the free throw line for one of the bonus. Four seconds left. That's uh, Kennedy Comer's second foul. Hopefully this is good for two points. You like to see us scoring points while the clock's not running. Blake goes up to the line. It's... First one's oh, good. Gets a got favorable the shooter's bounce. roll there. Yes, he did. Nice favorable bounce. Making it 28-24, four seconds left. If you're just joining us, Bearcats have had a whale of a first half. A little bit, bit of a setback the last couple of minutes, but uh, they've controlled this ball game from the get-go. Blake shoots the second one. It's good. Making it 28-29, four seconds left in the Pick first him up. half. Titans bring up the ball very quickly. Trying to get a shot off. It's good. Strong three-point. Making it 29-27. Coach Bucker's not going to be too happy about that last shot right there. No, you know, I tell you what, Michael, they let him back in the game. And uh, Lucky banked in three-pointer could, uh, you know, makes it a two-point game going into halftime. Well, it's been a good first half anyway. I know we're only up by two and we're up by 11, but it, it has been a good, strong showing by the Bearcats with the exception of the last two minutes this halftime. We're going to take a break. It's been a great ball game. I hope you enjoyed this broadcast. It's being brought to you by 852FX and iHi.com. This is the Kentucky Country Day Basketball Network.
Welcome back, Bearcat fans. It's halftime. Big senior night. We've got four seniors going out tonight. But we got a special evening as well with the Hall of Fame inductees here, of past athletes here at Kentucky Country Day. Big night. One of my good friends, John Crockett, is going to be inducted into the Hall of Fame for the Bearcats as well, who's also the father of Henry Crockett. I got to tell you, Bob, you're right as far as Henry. Henry's had a whale of a game. And I tell you, as Henry goes tonight, as goes the team. Absolutely. You know, Henry's got to, con he's got to control the tempo of the game. He's got us, you know, he has to get us into the half court. He has to set the offense. And, and against the pressure Collegian puts on you, that's a, that's a difficult task. So as well as he handles that may determine, you know, the outcome of this game. Well, the Titans have done a good job of, of uh, really keeping Blake Sinta in check. Every time he touches the ball, they've double teamed him and really done a nice job. Now, when they've let him go, of course, Blake's been able to score. Well, I think, you know, if you take a look at uh, when KCD was playing really well, they were attacking the collegiate press and getting easy baskets. And, right. And when we had to set up in the set in, once we got into the set end and we tried to execute against their man-to-man, -man, we didn't do quite as well. Uh, the pressure got to us in the half court. Well, we've got 11 minutes until the uh, start of the first half, or second half, excuse me. But uh, i tell you who's done a great job with this Hall of Fame. Coach Bill Bean, all, he, of course, he went to Country Day here, graduate. Also very much uh, uh, active when his kids were here. Now his kids are all graduated from Country Day, but still remains very much involved here in charge of the Hall of Fame uh, hallway Ab Absolutely, here. absolutely. Yeah, Bill Beam is, uh, he does, uh, you know, he does all the stats for KCD and all sports. And, uh, and you know, you can make a statement that KCD does a better job of keeping statistical information and honor our athletes probably better than any high school I've seen. Well, not only does Bill uh, uh, remain active here as far as the uh, Hall of Fame, Wall of Fame, but also uh, coaching here. He's in charge of the kickers, and I know he's one of your, uh, well, both of your sons, football coaches on the kicking side absolutely so, uh, but but he does you're right you mentioned the stats during the whole football season he would meet with me go over the stats he had everything that I needed to, to make a better broadcast as far as what was going on with the football team of course on the basketball side Todd Lyles has done a phenomenal job helping us out absolutely. keeping us up to date as far as uh, uh, points per game averages assists per game and uh Certainly do appreciate all the work that Todd Lyles goes to as well. Absolutely. Yeah, Todd's got some, I think, uh, uh, some senior night responsibility, so he's not with us tonight, and we really miss his statistical information. So, Chris Coulter coming out here now, 1977 uh, graduate. I don't know if the women really like to have them introduce <laughs> what year they were uh, graduates because, you know, a lot of women don't like to show their age. <laughs> But uh, I'll have to say, she doesn't look uh, like she's a graduate from 1977. Well, looks like she's still in good shape. Absolutely. More like 1950, but I'm just kidding there. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's a very young-looking lady. Another graduate from North Carolina as well. Yeah, I think this might, there might be three people graduating from North Carolina in this class. I don't know if Tim Green has something uh, for North Carolina or not, but uh, Woody Hartman, who's a graduate in 1980, he was, as they're saying, one of the most successful divers here for the Bearcats. Congratulations to him as well. And of course, our last one we're awaiting here, Mr. John Crockett. One of my favorite guys here. He helped me out with baseball. Oh, when, did he? Uh, Thomas and my son Mason played. We, uh, oh, great. We're both coaching uh, the fifth and sixth grade team. Tom, uh, or John, I should say, knows a lot about baseball. And he mentioned earlier he was a walk-on at University of North Carolina. He is a great baseball player, as well as both all three of his sons. Thomas is a great baseball player. Here comes Tom. John right now. John's getting quite an ovation. Graduate in 1982. 
very good athlete, as well as his uh, younger brother, John, or Tom. Tom, yes. You know, John and I coached uh, the junior class in fifth and sixth, the fifth and sixth uh, ba grade basketball team. You know, John was a very good coach. He's just a, he's just a great guy. Uh, uh, you know, that's about all you can say. He's just uh, class through and through would be, I guess, the best word I could think for John Crockett. Well, with eight minutes left in this halftime, let's talk about, Bob, what are we going to have to see or what's Coach Booker's telling the team inside the locker room right now to be able to get this, this ball game in check? Well, you know, Michael, I think the, the halftime speech changed a lot because of the last three or four minutes of that game. You know, I think he's got to tell them that, guys, you had, you know, you were in a good position and, and you let the pressure get to you. So, so, you know, we need to go into the second half just as if it's a new game. We're starting 0-0. Zero, zero. You know, we need to get back to what we did for the first uh, three quarters of the first half. And if we can do that, we'll win. If we revert back to how they played the, you know, the second half of the second quarter, then we're going to struggle. So, so really, it's uh, it's like what we talked about before the game. You got to take care of the ball. You got to handle the press. You know, you got to, you know, you got to make good decisions in the half court. You got to run everything through Blake. And if Blake's got a shot in the post, he needs to take it. If not, he needs to kick it out uh, for open three-point looks. I think that's what he's telling him. We got to do a better job of defending and. Uh, uh, preventing some of the offensive rebounds. I think Collegiate got way too many offensive rebounds in that uh, first half. Well, I tell you, I, I, foul trouble really hasn't been an issue. I, I know on the uh, uh, Collegiate side, they, they've gotten a lot more calls against them than the Bearcats have. So only I believe the only player we have in somewhat of foul trouble is uh, Zach Zach Lyles, Lyles has, two. has two fouls, but I believe that's it. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think that's all we got. So they've done a good job as far as the defense goes, not getting themselves in that type of trouble. So but uh, can we take a break, Kevin Salmon? We're gonna take a quick break. We got six minutes left in the halftime before tip off the second half. So come back for more Bearcat basketball after these messages. This game's being brought to you by National Guard. This is the 852FX.com. Hi, hi. Welcome back, Bearcat fans. But before we conclude this halftime uh, festivities of the uh, Hall of Fame uh, inductees this year for 2012, got alongside of me is John Crockett. John, I tell you what, you had a whale of a career here playing in uh, multiple sports. Obviously, we all know you're really successful on the basketball side as well as very much so on the baseball side. Talk about your experience here at Kentucky Country Day. 
Well, it was a great place, Michael, to, uh, to go to school. It's a terrific place to play sports. You have a lot of opportunities there. Uh, I was actually in the first class to go all four years at this campus out here on Springdale Road. And uh, so it's special to be back here always. And I've got uh, three sons who are going through or have gone through here. And so I'm pretty much a regular coming back out. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's great to be here. And this was a nice event tonight. So. Well, congratulations. I tell you, it's well-deserved. And uh, we, we, Bob and I have been talking to you a little bit about your past. Obviously, you, uh, you played baseball at North Carolina. And then uh, you were one of the great guys to help me on the fifth and sixth grade team when we started that team here having Thomas on the ball cl uh, club as well. And Henry, boy, I tell you what, let's talk about Henry since he's here on the court right now. He's having a whale of the game, and, and he's really taking control of this Bearcat team. And as far as I'm concerned, so goes Henry, so goes his team. What are we going to need to do this uh, second half to be able to put a win in the column here for the Bearcats? <clears throat> well, uh, Michael, thank you for saying that. I, I think we've got to get better shots than we got in the first half. We had some good looks that didn't go down early. And then Collegiate turned up the pressure pretty well, forced yes. us into some turnovers in the, uh, the backcourt in the second quarter. And so we got to figure out a way to get the ball in the middle of that press and try to get some easy buckets, I think. Absolutely. Well, you know, we were able to contain the full court press that the Titans put out there, but it seems like it got a little uh, sh uh, shady there at the end of that first half. And, and uh, I I'm not quite certain what happened there. What do you think the uh, reasoning behind there is? Uh, I don't know. I think we got uh, kind of bad spacing there for a while. Yeah. Uh, collegiate, uh, when when we were up 11 or so, I knew that uh, it was it was going to still become a game. And sure enough, they've turned it into a big one. The three at the end of the half was a big bucket. And so we got a war on our hands here. Yeah, we do. And it, it's nice to see that we're not really turning the ball over. We're turning it over somewhat, but not as much as we have in past games. So I like the way they've controlled the ball. And they've gotten lucky a few times because it's gotten a little shaky, but they've been able to hold on to that ball, and uh, they've gotten good shots. Pretty well, pretty well played game, really. They're, you know, uh, neither team got to the bonus in the first half, and uh, no, actually the Bearcats. Not, oh, did we just did yeah, at the end, yeah, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. But uh, not a lot of fouls. The referees are kind of letting them play out there, so it ought to be interesting. The last couple <laughs> quarters, we'll see. Absolutely. We'll, see. well, I appreciate you joining us for a few minutes, John. Thanks a lot, buddy. It's great seeing you again. You Congratulations. Thanks. Well deserved. You're a great person here. Thank you. A great Bearcat here for the all the student body. Well, that's fun. Thanks. All right. Thanks. Well, we're going to take a quick 30 second break. This is the Kentucky Country Day Basketball Network on iHide.com and 852FX. Come back for the start of the first, second half. Yeah, right. Oh, my God. Welcome back, Bearcat Nation. Michael Bennett coming to you from the campus of Kentucky Country Day in Louisville, Kentucky. Bob, let's talk about the stats from the first half. Yeah, real quick, Michael, for KCD, uh, Ricky Brown had eight. Zach Zimmick had two. Zach Laus had four points with two fouls. Henry Crockett, four. Blake sent a 10. And Robert Schultz, one. Shot Bearcat shot 48% from the field, 66.7 from the line and 17% on one for six from three-point land. Leading the Titans uh, with, uh, you know, with six points is David Keir and with six points is Andrew Stegman. Oh, Bearcats open up in the man-to-man -man defense. Double dribble's gonna be called. Nice to start off with a turnover by the Titans. The second half was 7.46 left in third quarter. Again, the, if you're just joining us for this second half, Bearcats are hovering a two-point lead after they really fought after 11 point lead and this Titan team has come back to make it a ball game against the Bearcats. Big crowd tonight, good to see both student bodies out here. Shot was missed by Henry Block Crockett. Unfortunately blocked now by number five, Bryce Overstreet. Open three right there, no good. Blake Sinta gets the rebound. 7-16 left, no score so far in the second half. Ricky Brown had a good look right there, but decided not to take a shot yet. 
Got to really improve the free throw shooting for this second half, Bob. That kind of seems to be a trend for this Bearcat club. Absolutely. Wide be open three right there, not able to convert. Be nice if we could knock down some threes too, Michael. Oh, oh. good hustle play there by Zach Zimlick. Yes, it was. Nice job right there. Kind of slow to coming back on defense, but he makes up for it right there by knocking the ball out of town. Of course, the uh, Titans retain the ball with 6.49 left. Again, no score so far in the second half. Bearcats are leading 29-27. Going to be forced another turnover right there. Mac Ferguson has big defense against number 10, Kennedy Comer, their junior guard on the Titan side. Ricky Brown gets ready to throw the ball into the Bearcats. Got a uniform there. Uh, got to tuck that shirt in before we get the start of the ball game here. Doesn't do a very good job of it. As he has a tail <laughs> yeah, he's got back. a bit of a tail there, doesn't he? <laughs> there we go. Henry brings it back up court. Confident young man. Really had a whale of a ball game here. Blocking call going to be against the Titans. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's got to be a block there, I think, on the Titans. He's already called it. Call's going to go against number 41, David Keir. That's his second foul. Team first of the second half. 6.43 left in the third quarter. Again, no score in this second half. Score remains 29-27. Zach Zimmick has a wide open three, just misses. Rebound goes to the Titans, but Mac Ferguson hustling to get that ball. Steals it away from the Titans. Bearcats set up their offense. 6.20 left in this third quarter. Henry Crockett's got it there at the side of the key. Trying to get it into Blake Sinner, but it's not happening right there. Titans done a good job on defense against that young man. Yes, they have. Granted, he has gotten 10 points. Oh, Ellen really? Mines pass right there. Nice shot by number 41, David Keir. Tying the score up with just under six minutes left. They are really on tight defense right there. I'm surprised the refs aren't calling something because that's really close right there as far as I'm concerned. Well, you know, the Comer kid is really, really, really quick. And uh, rebound right there. But stripped by Comer. Uh, Kennedy Comer gets that steal right there, number 10. Nice job. 5.30 left in the third quarter. Good steal, steal there right by there Ricky, Brown. Ricky Brown. He brings the ball back up the court. Mac Ferguson's got it out to the side. Blake's ready to set up the offense right there. Titans remain in their man-to-man -man defense. Ricky Brown takes it up. Oh, Strong. nice move there Bearcats by Ricky Brown. Points. Five minutes left in this third quarter. Bearcats retake the lead, 31-29. It's a really nice move there by Ricky. Nice team take it strong to the hole. A little bit of a push off there by Stegeman, not called. Wide open shot by Kier. It's good for three, making the score. 32-31, that might be the first lead for Collegian in this ball game. And they've got some good shooters, so. There's Kier again with a rebound. Tough foul right there by Ricky Brown, but it was the right thing to do, make sure that uh, Collegian wasn't able to make that shot as number three, Ryan Perry, goes to the free throw line. 4.36 left in this third quarter. Collegiate is leading by one, 32-31. Robert Schultz and uh, Zach Lau get ready to check in for the Bearcats. And uh, number 23, Will McAnulty and 22, Colin Shoot get ready to check in on the uh, Collegiate side. First three throws, no good. That helps. Zach Zimlin checks out for a well risk. While wow, Ron Perry misses, misses both one. of them. It's going to be jump ball. Zach Lyles gets in there hustling, trying to get that rebound. Unfortunately, Titans are able to get their hands on the ball. So, But it's going to go over to the Bearcats. 435 left. Collegiate is leading by one, 32-31.
Oh, that's you got to call wow. something there. I, I don't know how you can go to the floor and not call some kind of foul right there. Tough, tough non-call right there going against the Bearcats. So Henry Crockett hops back up, ready to play defense, and the Bearcats show their man-to-man defense. Four minutes left in this third quarter. Easy basket right there by Will McAnulty. Making the score 34-31. Bearcats call a timeout. I tell you, the first couple of minutes show what how this game can be uh, dictated right here. And uh, you can see that the Titans have come out really taking advantage of some sloppy play by the Bearcats. Well, you know, they got they got momentum going into the, you know, going into halftime yep. and they've carried that over. Again, the Bearcats need to do a much better job, you know, controlling the ball, making good decisions and eliminating the turnovers. And then they've been victim of a couple backdoor passes by the Titans. So, so you know, a couple defensive breakdowns and uh, uh, you know, they just need to get uh, they need to get their heads back in the game and start playing the way they did at the beginning of the game. Well, I tell you, even though Collegiate's in a height disadvantage, they're a hustling little team, well coached. They do a nice job. 4-14 left in the third quarter. Bearcats are losing 34-31, down by three. Collegiate shows that full court press again. Gets it into Blake Sinta. Henry takes over the ball, comes down, takes it over the half court, and ready to set up that offense on the Bearcat side. Nice block right there against Robert Schultz. David Keir again. Wow, Michael Nolte throws that one in. I had no idea Will McAnulty was such a good ball player. He's an incredible golfer. Is he really? Oh, he's a scratch golfer. Plays out at Hunting Creek and, I mean, works on his game all the time. Well, thank goodness, pass goes in a little scary, a little sketchy there to Robert Schultz. And, uh, but the ball is last touched by Collegiate. And, Bearcats are able to retain the ball with 3.40 left in this third quarter. I tell you, you know, I tell you, Collegiate's playing really good half-court man-to-man defense, yeah. helping on the weak side, and, uh, you know, KCD's not, you know, uh, just not fundamentally sound right now. Robert needs to take that ball, pull it into his chest, open his elbows up, and uh, take it strong to the hole. Well, you know, you talked about the hand-checking in the first half. And the, the defensive side on the uh, collegiate team, they they were able to test the referee, see if they're going to call it close or not. They haven't called it close. Therefore, they're hand-checking constantly. Yep. And that's really rattled the Bearcat offense. Right. Good call right there going against the Titans. That'll put Robert Schultz up to the line for two free throws. That's David Kier's third foul, too. Yeah, it's David's uh, third foul, team third foul. 3.14 left in the third quarter. Bearcats are down 36-31. Robert shoots the first free throw. It's no good. I can see it coming off his hand. Just a little too much. Might be a little adrenaline coming through right there, Bob. Yeah. Again, you know, these are the, these are the shots I have to make. Free throws have killed us on multiple games. Absolutely. And, uh, unfortunately, it's hurting us again tonight. Got the second one, making the score 36-32 with three minutes left in the second half. Or, I'm sorry, it's th- second, third quarter. I'll get it right in a minute. Wide open shot right there for the Titans. Doesn't go good, but good. Rebound, way to block out for Ricky Brown. Controls the ball, throws it off to Henry Crockett. Gets it out to Blake Sinta, who drives in. That's got to be a foul. Nice shot nice right there. there by Blake Going Sinta. up with confidence, making the score 34-36. Oh, that's this way. Of the Bearcats. Oh, I thought it was last touched by the Collegiate Titans, and unfortunately referees didn't see it that way. Collegiate's going to keep the ball. Coach Booker showing a little excitement there. I love that. <laughs> he doesn't show too much. No, he doesn't. he does, you, you appreciate it. Ricky Beautiful Brown fell asleep right there. there, Michael. Yeah, we you can't did. Go to let him go back door on you. Getting a little shaky again on I the mean, offense, but they're on a call against number 22. Call and shoot. That's their fourth team foul. His second. 
225 left. Bearcats are down by four, 38 34. Zach Lau, Ricky Brown, Henry Crockett, Robert Schultz, and Blake Center are the five Bearcats that are in the ballgame right now. Tight, tight, man to man defense by this Titan team. Turnover right there by the Bearcats. Robert didn't know if it was coming to him or if it was going to uh, Zach. So, unfortunately, the ball's going to be handed over to the Titans. Just a little over two minutes left in the third quarter. Bearcats down by four. Again, fouls really not an issue for the Bearcats. They only have one team foul this half. Shot's no good. Rebound by Blake. All right, Mike, we need a bucket right here. It's crunch time. We need something. Zach does a nice job passing that ball up to Blake. Up for a three. It's good. good. That's even better. Making the score 38 37. Bearcats down by one with one minute and 40 seconds left this third quarter. That really puts a little momentum in our favor there, Bob. Yeah, it certainly helps. Bearcats come out again with that tight man to man. Good That's defense no good. there by Henry Crockett. Yes, it was. Rebound by Zach Lyles. He gets it over to Henry Crockett to bring us across the half court line. Tight, tight defense again. They're going to be calling that. Gets it up. It's oh, good. Beautiful it's move. good. Great drive right there by Henry Crockett. Bearcats retake the lead 39 38 with one minute left in the third quarter. It's going to be a 30 second timeout by Collegiate. Oh, that's a game changer right there for the Bearcats side. You know, Michael, one of the concerns that, you know, I see going into the fourth quarter here, we got 109 left in the third, is Collegiate's done a really nice job of rotating their guys in and out. You know, I wish Coach Booker would have done more of that. You know, I don't think Crockett's came out of the game yet. And, you know, all the pressure they're, put, they're putting on him, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be interesting to see how he can hold up. It would be nice to get him a couple minutes of rest. Well, it's tough. I tell you, he's, he's obviously having a whale of a game. I'm sure Coach Booker doesn't want to take him out because of that reason, but you're right. There's a fine line of keeping a player in and taking him out and letting him rest a little bit. But you take the chance of losing that momentum because he's confident tonight and is really taking control of this game on his own. I, I'm proud of that young man. Great to see his dad inducted into the Hall of Fame at halftime. But, boy, it's, it's even bigger night. The Bearcats can pull out this win, and Henry Crockett's right there leading the team all the way. The Leach has got the ball. Almost up and down right there, but they didn't call it because he got the shot off. I, I, I didn't see that. Well, they called a push off. Crockett pushed off on Comer. He I think Comer okay. did a bit of an acting job there, okay. but Henry extended his arm, and it was the right call. Now number 20, Will Matson checks in for number 22, Colin Shoot. Foul goes against Henry Crockett. That's his second team second as well. Quick shot right there, blocked by Robert Schultz. Beautiful job by Robert. 52 seconds left in this third quarter. Bearcats are leading 39-38. Collegiate has the ball. Tight man-to-man -man defense by the Bearcats. Collegiate might hold on for the last shot here. Wow, big push off right there against Zach Lyles. No call. They are going to hold it. Tight, tight man-to-man. -man. Bearcats are doing a spectacular job on defense right here. 30 seconds left. Bearcats are leading by one. Round and around they go, running that offense. Bearcats are keeping up with where that ball's going. 20 seconds left in the third quarter. Bearcats hovering that one-point lead, 39-38. Zach Lyle, top of the key. Blake Sinta picks him up. Tight, tight, 10 seconds left. Drive right there, nice drive. It's not gonna be good. Rebound by Collegiate, throws it up, no good. That's gonna be the end of the third quarter. Up. What? Oh my gosh. I don't know about that. Come on guys, let's call this foul game fair. Wow. How do you get undercut and give the ball to the team that undercuts you? I, 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 I'm at a loss for words. I don't know, I've seen some horrific calls. That would be one of the top two. But with .8 seconds left in this third quarter, Bearcats are leading 39 to 38. Quick shot, no good. Bearcats are gonna take it in the fourth quarter, covering this one point lead. What a ball game, Bob. 
We're going to take a quick break. Come back for the start of the fourth quarter. Bearcats are leading 39-38, being brought to you by 852FX.com and iHive. This is the National Guard Game of the Week. Coaches are just like kids. Sometimes they say the darndest things. Well, last week in practice, we didn't practice well, so we got it today. For five minutes in the game, um, we look like a pretty good football team. Well, probably most of the people turned off the TV. <laughs> and the reason I don't take it like it's life or death because you die a lot. You hear what the coaches say, we'll tell you what it means. Join us for the new Red and Blue Review. Michael Bennett coming to you from the campus of Kentucky Great Country Day for the National Guard Game of the Week. This is rivalry week against the Bearcats and the Titans. Big, big, long rival between Country Day and Collegiate here in Louisville, Kentucky. Glad you're here along with us joining this ball game as we come to this final quarter. Bearcats leading 39-38. Bob Holgrave, I tell you, it's been an incredible ball game. Turnover right there, almost by the uh, Titans. But unfortunately, yeah, break there by the well, yeah, it's been an incredible game. But uh, I tell you, whoever wins this game, I'm hoping on the Bearcats side, obviously. But it, it's going to be a well-fought game. So Titans bring the ball inside, looking for a three-point shot. It's contested by Henry. Pulls it in. No good. Really good defense there by the Bearcats. Can't get the rebound, unfortunately. Ball going to go over to the All Bearcats. Right. Crowd goes crazy. That student body's really here to support their hometown boys here at Country Day. Again, it's 7.41 left in the fourth quarter. Bearcats are leading by one, 39 to 38. Ricky Brown brings the ball up, hands it off to Henry Crocker, brings it off to the half court line. Ready to set up his offense on this Bearcat side. Ricky Brown takes it inside, throws it back to Zach Klaus, just outside. Actually, Henry Crocker was on that three. I'm sorry, Henry Crockett, you're right. Tight man-to-man -man defense right there. Double team right there, it's contested. It goes in and out, Ricky Brown gets the rebound. Seven minutes left in this ball game. Bearcats still leading by one. Zach Lyle's got the ball, drives in. No good, no call on the play. I can't believe they didn't make a call right there. That had to be a blocking foul right there going against the Titans and they don't call it again. 6.52 left in this ball game. Bearcats leading 39-38. Team foul's not a factor. Team foul's going against the Titans are three. Team foul against the Bearcats are two. Oh. Air ball right there by Bad number 11. By Ethan Perales. Yep. Blake brings that ball down, gives it off to Henry Crockett. Blake's wide open, but he drives in. Call's going to go against the Titans. That's their fourth team foul. Foul's going against number five, Bryce Overstreet, their sophomore forward. Six. David Kier's coming back in for Collegian, Michael. He's, uh, he's really been their, their main guy in this game. Well, you called it before the game. I, you know, we talked about his family, what a great family he has. And you're right, he's just an athlete, a pure athlete. Done a great job for that Collegian team. Nice drive right there for Henry Crockett. Misses the ball, but there's foul on the call. It's going to go against Collegiate. That's their fifth team foul. You know, Michael, you could call a foul on every play. You know, they, they, our guys are trying yeah. to take it to the hole, and they're getting bumped and hand checked on every play. Exactly. Well, that's foul's going to go against Ethan Perales. That's his first foul. I tell you, Ethan plays hard. He checks out. Boy, this is a mismatch. Blake should be able to score all day long here. This is the shot right there. Easy two points, but uh, unfortunately the rebound's going to be taken over by Ryan Carey of the Collegiate Titans. Six minutes left in this ball game. No score change in this half or this quarter. Score still remains 39-38. One point lead for the Bearcats. Team fouls are becoming an issue for Collegiate. It's five team fouls against them. The so country days two. A little out of control Good right there. there yes, it was great defense. Bearcats are taking over. 5.52 left in the ball game. Scores 39-38. Oh, 
Ricky Brown grabs it from the referee, hands it off to Henry Crockett, back to Ricky Brown. Doing that full port press against the Bearcats, Collegian is. Brings across the timeline. Henry takes it up the middle, over to Blake Sinta. No, just missed, gets the rebound. Up, it's oh, good. Oh. oh, what a game he's playing. Blake Sinta, that's his 14th point of the ball game, making the score 41-38 with 5.20 left in the ball game. Nice defense right there by the Bearcats. They're not, Titans aren't able to get anything going on the offensive side yet. Drives it in the middle, misses. Rebound by Robert Schultz. Bearcats take over with five minutes left this ball game and a three-point lead. Ricky Brown drives it in. It's good. Oh, nice. It's good. Oh, 43 to 38. Bearcats take a five-point lead with just under five minutes left in the ball game. Timeout, Collegiate. It's going to be a full timeout. Bearcats have come out for this fourth quarter and really taking control of the game so far. We're going to take a break, come back with 4.51 left. This is the Kentucky Country Day National Guard Game of the Week. All right, Bearcat fans, let's get this ball game going. It's 4:51 left in the ball game. In the ball game, Bearcats are leading by five points. Bob, I tell you, they really stepped up there on the offense and defensive side. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we're getting some good stops. The Legion's not able to set the press up, and we're taking advantage on the offensive end. So let's see if we can keep our composure, continue to play some good defense, and uh, open this lead up a little bit. Absolutely, Ed. Bearcat student body really cheering on their team here. Three-point shot right there, no good. Blake Sinta gets the rebound, throws it out to Mac Ferguson. Bearcats take over with 4.30 left in this ball game and a five-point lead. Bearcats can just take their time now, no hurry to make any kind of shots. Wear down that clock. Sometimes that works for you, sometimes that works against you. Henry Crockett drives in, misses the shot. Foul's going to go against Henry. Made a nice move there, Michael. Just uh, couldn't convert. No, he couldn't. I mean, I think he did everything right. He went in with his left hand, strong, aggressive move. Um, just missed it. Well, that's the third foul for Henry Crockett. Third team foul against the Bearcats. Four minutes left in the ball game. Bearcats still hovering that five point lead. Titans setting up their offense. Not getting the right shot yet. Robert Schultz. On the defensive side against number 22, Colin Sh uh, Schultz. McAnulty has it. Back out, open shot right there, contested by Robert. Rebound by Blake. That's what we needed. 340 left in the ball game. Five point lead on the Bearcats side. Well, and Henry needs to create separation. You know, Comer's getting right up under his shirt and. Uh, Henry needs to get a forearm into him and create some separation. Well, unfortunately, we now have a foul problem with Henry Crockett. That's his fourth foul, fourth team foul against the Bearcats. 3.30 left in the ball game. Kier's got the ball. Good defense right there by Zach Lau. Kier's trying to throw it away. Good defense right there. Rebound by Mac Ferguson. Throw out to Zach Lau. He goes up. It's good. It's good! It's good! 45-38 with three minutes left in the ball game. Oh, what a block oh, by what Blake Sinta! What a job! Blake's got it, getting it back out to Henry Crockett. No, he's going to take it up to the half-court line. Henry's got it. No need to hurry right here. That's Mac Ferguson a block. Be a foul. Oh, that, uh, Michael, that's the worst call I've ever seen. 
That is just atrocious. Well, I tell you, referees getting their money's worth tonight. They're trying to keep this ball game close because I'm with you. I try to call it unbiased, but obviously I am for the Bearcats. But that, that was a very unusual call. I, I thought the last one was probably the top two or three. That's got to be the top worst call I've ever seen in my life. Well, with 2.40 left in the ball game, Bearcats are leading 45-38. Nice pass right there. Yeah, nice pass. Scores by number Stegman five. Stegman Overstreet. Bryce Overstreet. Oh, bad decision. We don't need that. Bad decision. We don't need that. When you got two minutes left in the ball game, you need to hold on to the ball. I know he's trying to get the crowd excited. Shot well, I think Overstreet got away with a walk there, but good defense by Schultz and a nice rebound. That yeah, was. Now let's hold on to the ball here with two twelve left in this ball game. Bearcats are up by five, 45 to 40. Blake Sinta getting ready to get this offense going. Hold on to the ball. Over to Ricky Brown. He dribbles in. It's going to be stolen. Going to be out of bounds. By the Titans. Coach Booker kind of helped on that one. Thank goodness right there. That was a good screen there by <laughs> Coach Booker. Yeah, it was. Well, with 159 left, Bearcats 45, Collegiate 40. What an exciting ball game tonight. Blake Sinta comes out there. There's obviously no hurry because there's no shot clock in high school. Max got a wide open. Doesn't make it, but rebound by Ricky Brown. Throws it out to Blake Sinta. Boy, Ricky Brown, Michael's played a great game tonight. Yes, he has. He's done a nice job rebounding the basketball. Uh, he's just been solid. Nice takes to the hole. He's been solid. Well, it's going to be a full timeout. We're going to take a timeout, too, with 1 minute 38. This is the National Guard game of the week. 45-40, Bearcats are leading. Come back for the final minute 38. This is Kentucky Country Day Basketball Network. Brought to you by iHigh.com at 852FX. Welcome back, 138 left in the fourth. Michael's got some technical difficulties. I'll leave us in here until he gets back. So, uh, exciting game. Uh, five, uh, five point lead here by the Bearcats. I think we got Michael back here, so. Thank you, Bob Grave with one minute, 38 seconds. We got a whale of a ball game here, folks. Glad you're along with us. This is Kentucky Country Day basketball at its finest right here tonight. I tell you, it's going to be tough to call a player of the game. I, between you just mentioned Ricky Brown, between uh, uh, um, Blake Senta, and between Henry Crockett, they've all played a whale of a game. And of course, uh, with the cast of other players here, it's it's been a great game by the whole team. I tell you what, you know, they foul on every possession. Kim just got rung up for his fourth. All right, that is going to be the 14th you know, foul. Michael, whenever you reach in with that hand on that play, exactly. if he reaches in with his left hand, he doesn't get the foul with the right, it's automatic. Exactly. Well, again, you're going in with the wrong hand, so you're hitting the body. Yes. So that's going to be the 16th foul against Collegiate. One more in the uh, – Bearcats are going to be one in the bonus with 120 left. Bearcats obviously, again, in no hurry to make any kind of score. They can just let the clock run down, let make them foul you. Of course, you got the right guy with the ball. Henry Crockett's got it in there. It's good! Oh, what a it's nice good! Good by Henry Crockett. 40 with one minute left. Bearcats take a seven point lead. Oh, what a job right there by Blake Sinta. He walked. walked. Oh, he didn't call it. Oh, I thought he walked. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I tell you, uh, these referees want to keep the ball game here. But with 55 seconds left, this is Kentucky Country Day Basketball Network. Come back. You're watching a live broadcast on AHA.
by 852FX. Be ready, fall in, game on. Bearcats, this rivalry is going to go down in infamy with 55 seconds left. Bearcats are leading 47 to 40. This would be a big win, as you said earlier, Bob Holtgrave. This, we haven't been uh, on the winning side of this rivalry in, in a little while, and plus this would be payback time from that uh, uh, seventh region uh, yeah, all-A tournament. That, yeah, that game could have gone either way. I, I will say the one thing about Collegium, Michael, they, they are very well coached. And, you know, they get the max out of everything that they got. Yes, they like do. That said, that was a terrible nine-walk <laughs> call there. Nice job by number 41, David, David Keir. 49 seconds left. That's the 16th uh, foul against the Bearcats. That foul is going to go against number 22, Blake Sinta. That is his first foul. It'll be two shots for David. First one's no good. 49 seconds left. Bearcats are leading seven points, 47 to 40. Team fouls remain the same at six and six. All right, Michael, a three possession game right now with 49 seconds left. And big free throw. Two. Yeah, big free throw right there. David Kira was able to make that second one, make it a two possession game, 47-41. Bearcats are leading with 49 seconds left in the ball game. Oh, wide open, wide open. Roberts got it. He gets down, hustled down there. I didn't really see much of a foul there, but we'll take it. That's the 17 foul, putting Robert Schultz up to the free throw line for one and one. That's a dangerous pass. It worked. Now let's see if Robert yeah. can step up to the line and uh, make a couple of these free throws. I don't know if that was advised. Uh, to me, it was ill-advised pass, but Robert able to get down there like a, a receiver, not a quarterback, to get that ball. So he's up there one in the bonus. Well, Collegiate's got so much team speed. First one's good. Uh, yeah, but it's hard to make that kind of pass. That makes it 48-41, two possession game right here. Clock only ran off three seconds. So 46 seconds left. Bearcats are leading 48-41. Robert Schultz has one more free throw. Misses the second one, but the clock starts running. 40 seconds left. Collegia brings up the ball really fast. Nice fake right there. David Kerr's got a wide open three. It's good. <laughs> 33 seconds left. Scores 48-44. Foul's going to go against number 21, Andrew Stegeman. Undeniably the best player on the collegiate team, junior guard. Back makes the first one. 33 seconds left. I tell you, Michael, I wish Coach Booker would put some people in the lane. It's a five-point game. You can't walk away like it's up 10 or 12. Makes the second one. That's why he's the coach and we're announcing. Scores 50 to 44. Six point lead for the Bearcats. Two possession game right now. 28 seconds left. Contested three right there is missed. Rebound by Zach Lyles. It's gonna be fouled immediately. That's gonna be the ninth team foul. Bearcats are in one of the bonuses. Zach Lyles goes to the line for one. Foul goes against number 21, Andrew Stegeman. That's his second foul. Allegiance ninth team foul. Again, 23 seconds left. We're hovering a 26 uh, point lead here, two possession. These free throws are big. First one's good. Good shot there by Zach Lyles. A lot of composure there for sophomore, Michael. Second one's good. 52-44, three possession go ball game. 23 seconds, the clock is running. Quick three right there by Collegiate. It's no good. Blake Sinta gets the rebound. 15 seconds, clock's running. 
Zach Goggins, he's going to be fouled right there. They're calling it 10 seconds left. Eight point lead by the Bearcats. This is going to be a monumental lead for them. That's a 10th team foul. That's David Kier's fifth foul. He's going to be out of the ball game, but boy, you're right. What an athlete. Great ball game for David, David Kier. Good player. 10 seconds left, eight point lead. Bearcats are leading. Zach Lyle shoots the first one, misses it. Mac Ferguson checks in. Zach Zimlick checks in. Oh, what a whale of a ball game for Henry Crockett right there as he checks out. Crowd goes wild for that young man. Second one's good, 53-44, a nine point lead. 10 seconds left. Five seconds left. As the crowd starts yelling, well, goodbye. This is gonna be a big one for the Bearcats, and that's the ball game. 53-44 as the Bearcats take down Collegiate. Bob, great ball game. It was a good game. It's nice to see um, KC come up or come, uh, come out on the, the good side of this. So Absolutely. Well, the Bearcats are going to helm with a big smile on their face. Hopefully come back in here Tuesday night against Anderson County, 730. Hope you can join us. We will be on iHigh.com, myself and Bob Holgrave. Look at that student body. They're having a great time over there, Bob. Absolutely, Michael. It's, uh, it was a good game, but played hard by both teams. It's nice to see KCD on the positive side. Oh, I tell you, who's the player of the game for you? I'm having a tough time. You know, I got to tell you, I got to go out on a limb, and I'm going to say, uh, uh, to me, you, you expect great things from Blake. You expect Henry to control the game. I initially would say Ricky Brown, but I yes. tell you what, Zach Lyles yes. stepped up to the line and hit clutch free throws. So, yes, he did. So I would say we have co-players in the game, <laughs> and I'm going to say it's uh, Zach Lyles and Ricky Brown. I'm with you right there. Great job, Bob. Really enjoyed Mike the ball Lowe, game. It's a pleasure. <laughs> Appreciate you being out there, Bearcat Nation. Hope you enjoyed this ball game. Bearcats win. Bearcats win. 53-44. Come out Tuesday night, 730iHigh.com. We certainly do appreciate 852FX as well joining us. This has been the National Guard Game of the Week. This is Kentucky Country Day Basketball Network.